Now, before we dig into the different HTML tags and the different CSS properties that we have to work with, I want to establish a few basic principles that will provide a solid foundation for everything else you learn about HTML and CSS from this point forward. The first principle is that everything that the browser displays, I'll jump back to the browser, in terms of styling is overridable. This is something that the browser is just deciding as a good default, but we can do anything with it. So right now this heading has some styling that we've decided, but also some styling that the browser has decided. So we decided that the background was gonna be yellow and that the font size would be 40 pixels. The browser decided that this is bold and that it's in this particular Times New Roman font. Now we can change this in two different ways. One is that we can use a different element. So instead of using H1, maybe we could use a paragraph tag or the generic div tag, which I'll show you in just a moment, or we can change the CSS. So let's take a look at the first way to approach this, which is changing the tag. Now this is problematic. So if a red flag just went up in your head, you're on the right track, but let's look at how we do that. So let's jump back to our file explorer and open up the fourth step which is called using divs. So if we compare this side by side with our current index.html file, you can see that the only difference is that we've replaced our h1 and p tags with the generic div tag. So div is short for divider, and div traditionally comes with zero styling, no styling at all. So if we want any styling, we have to add it ourselves. In this case, we're adding a background of yellow and a font size of 40 pixels, just like we did before. So copy the code that's in your fourth step and paste it over the code that's in your index.html file and save it, and then jump back to the browser. And before you hit the refresh button, take note of what you're seeing here on the screen, and then let's refresh. Okay, so it looks similar, but there's some differences. We lost the bolding in this heading, we also lost the spacing between the two different elements. That's because a div isn't going to tell the browser to do anything with the styles. The spacing that we saw between the heading and the paragraph is something that the browser was deciding was part of the styling of both the paragraph and the heading. And the bolding of the heading was also a decision by the browser to say that the heading is gonna be bold. So we could actually adjust the styles to make it look identical to what we just had by adding a bold styling for the heading and adding some margin or padding to these two elements to separate them from each other. And don't worry if you don't know what these different properties mean, like margin, padding, or bolding. We'll come back around and talk about what each one of these does and how they work. But the point here is that a div gives us completely unstyled content and demonstrates to us that any styling that happens is something that the browser is choosing. And it's something that we can also override. So we've seen now how we can style a div tag to mimic the look of other HTML elements, but we can also go the other direction and strip the styling from an existing tag so that it looks like an unstyled element. So let's see how that would work. I'm gonna jump back to our file explorer and I'll open up the fifth step called index.html resetting styles. I'll copy this code and I'll paste it in our index.html file overriding what's there, and I'll save it. And you can see here that we've changed back to using the H1 tag and the P tag in our content, and we've edited the styles so that the font size is 1EM, and we'll talk more about what this measurement means later on in the series. And then we're setting the font weight to normal, so this is to override the bolding. Now if we go back to the browser and refresh, you can see that our heading now looks an awful lot like our paragraph. So hopefully this illustrates this first principle, that we can override any styles in the browser. We can make any element look like any other element, 